Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 31 is our text for today. And before we get into our text and message, let me echo what Brother Michael said to all of our graduates. We wish you the very, very best. We're, we're proud of you and we're proud for you. And uh, as you go on with your life, our prayers will go with you. Mark chapter 1, verse 29. Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word today. From 1991 through 1999, ABC had a comedy series on called Home Improvement. Yeah. You remember that? It was one of the most popular shows that ABC has ever had. For every year, it was always at or near the top of the ratings and, of course, won many awards. The show's leading character was a character a character named Tim the Tool Man Allen, who had his own TV show on the TV show, and it was called Tool Time. The show was all about the wacky and funny situations Tim the Tool Man would get himself in, both on his show and back at home with his wife and kids. And as I vaguely recall, I hadn't seen it for a while, but what I can recall of it, it was mostly a pretty clean-cut show, which is getting harder and harder to find these days. But I use the title of that show for this message because when Jesus Christ is invited and admitted into a home, there is always a home improvement. We find this played out in our text today. When Jesus went into the home of Peter and Andrew, after they had been to the synagogue for worship. Let's see now how Jesus improved this home and how he improves our homes. First of all, Jesus brought healing to this home. In this case, the healing was physical. For as we read, Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Now, one commentator I read wrote that she was probably sick because of Peter. Peter was her son-in-law. And as we know, Peter was a handful, but that wasn't why she was sick. No, as we'll see in a moment, her sickness was of a different type. But when Jesus took the hand of Peter's sick mother-in-law, she was healed. Now, in our homes, Jesus Christ can also bring physical healing as well. But folks, that's not the only kind of healing Jesus brings to our homes and families. He also heals fractured relationships between the husband and the wife. He also heals broken relationships between the parents and the children. And he also heals splintered relationships between the siblings. Jesus Christ can heal the anger and bitterness that's found in many homes. He can heal the envy and jealousy that exists in many homes. And he can heal the greed and selfishness found in homes. As we all know, family wounds and injuries are the worst kind. For they cut the deepest, they hurt the most, and they last the longest. But Jesus Christ can heal any family wound and injury if only that family and home will invite him into their home. For you see, home improvement is his specialty. Then second of all, Jesus brought hope to this home. The words used here to describe her sickness and fever are very strong words. So this tells us that she just didn't have a little cold or the sniffles. She was in a very critical and serious condition. She was even at the point of dying. But with his healing of her, Jesus brought hope to the home of Peter and his family. Now, in case you haven't noticed lately, in case you've been away on Mars or the moon, the family and home in our world today is in the same shape Peter's mother-in-law was in. 
Our home and family and the world today is sick, running a very high fever. The family and home in our world today, in general, is hurting. It's in pain, it's in trouble, it's even in danger of dying. And what is the best and only hope for our family to recover and get better and well? Well, it's not a what, it's a who. Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not a professional sociologist. I'm not a professional psychologist. I'm not a professional any kind of ologist. But folks, I've seen enough of life and I've seen enough of families to know that again, Jesus Christ is the only hope our families and homes have. And as our homes go, so goes our nation. And as our homes go, so goes our world. And then thirdly, Jesus Christ brought help to this home. Now obviously, he helped the sick lady. But did you notice what she did in verse 31 after she was helped? She served them. She got up off of that sick bed and fetched dinner or lunch for that hungry bunch of men. Now we all know what she served. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans, a casserole of some kind, hot rolls and maybe banana pudding. But here's the point. She was helped and then in turn she helped others. And that's the way it should be in our homes and families. That's the way our homes and families should operate and run. Members helping each other in any way that they can and should. Each spouse doing their part, each parent doing their part, and each child doing their part. Families hurt and suffer when some members do their part and some members do not. Families pay for it when all the members do not carry their fair share of the load and weight. I have seen families where some members wore out from doing too much and some members rusted out from not doing enough or doing nothing at all. That's not right and we all know it's not right. And the best way to remedy that problem is to let Jesus Christ have our home. For once he has the home, the members will have a helping heart. And when they have a helping heart, they will then give a helping hand. And then fourthly, Jesus brought happiness to this home. Now Mark doesn't specifically tell us about this happiness, but we all know that when this lady was healed and saved from dying, all the members of that family were happy. They were pleased and elated and overjoyed at how this turned out. And this is what Jesus does. When he comes into a home, he brings happiness to that home and family. Jesus Christ can replace the madness and sadness in a home with gladness. Jesus Christ can replace the scowls and the sneers with smiles. Jesus Christ can replace the callousness and the coldness with compassion and concern. Jesus Christ can replace bitterness with bliss, anger with acceptance, envy with encouragement, jealousy with joy, resentment with respect, temper with temperance, and selfishness with selflessness. Friends, if you want a happy home instead of a boxing match or a wrestling match, if you want a happy home instead of a battlefield or a war zone, you invite Jesus Christ into your home, for he brings happiness into our homes. Now, let's be clear about something. Even with Jesus Christ at the head of our homes and families, there is no such thing as a perfect home and family. You don't have a perfect family. I don't have a perfect family. Nobody does. And why is that? Very simple. Every home is made up of people, people who are sinners, people who have dirty feet and dirty other things. But 
there is also no home that Jesus Christ cannot help and improve. I've been in the ministry now for 39 years, and I have seen homes and families that I'll be honest with you, I gave up on. I completely wrote them off as being helpless and hopeless, being beyond any help. I'm ashamed to say it, but I've seen families in homes where I quit praying for them because I thought I was wasting my time. But here's what I've seen. I've seen Jesus Christ save those very families. I've seen Jesus Christ repair and restore those very same families. I have seen him bring healing, hope, help, and happiness into what I thought was impossible family and home situations. Folks, he can do it. And I'm here to tell you he will do it if, 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 if the home and family will invite him into their home, if they will accept him as the head of their house and as they'll follow him as the king of their castle. As you all well know, there is a term or a phrase we use to describe who runs a family. You know what it is. Who wears the pants in that family, right? I've seen families where the guy wore the pants, I've seen families where the gal wore the pants. I've seen families where the kids wore the pants. And I kid you not, I've seen some families where the pets wore the pants. I'm not kidding. I've seen a few families where the pets actually ran the family. Here's what I'm driving at. Whoever wears the pants in your family needs to take them off and give them to him. You let Jesus Christ wear the pants in your family. You let him call the shots. You let him run the show. Because folks, he's forgot more about the family than we'll ever know. And who created the family in the first place? It wasn't Dr. Stock or Spock or whatever his name was. No, it was Jesus Christ. So I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ will help and improve your home and your family. What does a carpenter do? He builds things. And what does a carpenter from Nazareth do? He builds lives. And I'm here to tell you, folks, the carpenter from Nazareth specializes in building homes and families. Nobody can build a home and a family like the carpenter from Nazareth. You let him wear the pants in your family.